I'm so glad to be here today and sharing the Word of God. Today we're going to look at something a little bit different. Um, we're going to take a pause from the book of Luke. We've been looking at the life of Christ in, in preparation for Easter, and so we're just going to do a little pause there, but obviously still the Word of God, and it's a special blessing, as you see on the front of your bulletin, blessing. And I want us to get an understanding of this blessing today. Um, how many of you had a little bit of trouble getting to church again today? Roads jammed, yeah, it was a car-free day. And I really like being car-free in Addis because we have these days, but you never know what day it's going to be. The first service started out very small, got a little bit bigger, and then people were telling me that it took them a long time to get here because of this car-free day. But we're here, and what a blessing to share together, to worship together as we have joined. Amen? Amen. We're going to look into the book of Numbers today, Numbers chapter 6 and verses 20 through, 22 through 27. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And so they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you again for the gathering of your people. Lord, we've come together to worship you, to praise you, and to hear your voice in the scripture today. Lord, receive our worship, receive our praise from men and women and young people and children, all with thankful hearts for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives and in our church. We continue to pray for Ethiopia, for some of us, the land of our birth, for others, a land where we've come to serve in different ways. And Lord, we pray that your glory would just shine in every high mountain and every low valley and every corner of this great nation, that you would be lifted up and that you would be glorified. We pray for our sister churches around the land that are even gathered right now on this Sunday morning. And we pray that you would bless them, O God. Let your word be rich in each of those places. Lord, that your people would be radically changed and that they would impact their communities and their families for the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to pray also for our Prime Minister, Dr. Abbey, and we pray your special blessing upon him. Lord, that you would also watch over him and bless him and keep him. Let your face shine upon him. Be gracious to him as he serves you and as he serves this great people. Minister to him and minister through him, we pray. And again, watch over and guard him and all that serve with him as well. Again, that all would be done to your honor and to your glory. And Father, now as we turn our hearts and minds to Scripture, we look at this beautiful blessing that you called out, that you wanted your people to hear and to receive. And Lord, I pray that each one of us that has come today, you know the needs so different in each one of us. But Lord, I pray that you, by your Holy Spirit and by your word, you would come and work and answer those prayers. Take care of those needs. Lord, show yourself mighty. Lord, let there not be one who goes from this place who did not know your presence. But each one of us would sense that we have been with the Almighty God today. Again, bless us with your word. Open our hearts to hear and to receive your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the blessing that we've just read from Numbers chapter 6 is a blessing that you hear many times in church, and it may not be referenced and, and all, but it's a benediction, the last word so often as the congregation is going out. Very similar to the apostolic blessing that we see in 2 Corinthians in chapter 13, verse 14, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's different, it's packed with different things, but very, very similar. Very similar to the blessing that usually I give, the benediction, as I leave on a, as we dismiss on a, on a Sunday morning. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And this blessing here, it comes up three times, the Lord, the Lord, 
the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord turn his face to you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We see the, the Trinity even in this prayer, this prayer of blessing. And by extension, though it was for Israel, as the people of God, we are to receive this blessing. We need to be ready for this blessing, and we need to be eager for this blessing. In this blessing here, there are more details than some of the others, the, the other benedictions. Details, it's specific, it's packed. It's loaded with God's blessing, and that's what we want to do today, is hear just a little bit more of the blessing of God through, uh, through these few verses. It's a blessing that is to be received. I know as I give the benediction on a Sunday morning, many of you will stand with your hands open, ready to receive that blessing. Sometimes I'll stretch my hands out as just as a symbol, as an act, as we, as we share. The blessing is conferred one to another. But we need to be ready to receive it. We can sit and we can stand and whatever and just decide we're not going to get the blessing. But how much better if we receive all the blessings that God has for us. Amen? Sometimes we say blessings and God bless you and all, and we do it as a greeting, as a parting, and, and all of these kinds of things, and, and sometimes maybe we do it carelessly. But how much better if we do it in full knowledge of the blessing that we're giving? Most of my emails, if I'm sending it to a brother or sister in Christ, I'll sign it off, blessings, David. And when I do that, I don't just do it out of habit, but I do it because I care about the one I'm sending it to. I care about you, and with that blessing, very often before I press send, I pray for you. I think about you, and I send that blessing. I ask God, bless my friend, bless my brother, bless my sister. So it's not a careless thing, but usually I'll sign off there, blessings. Tabaraku. Do you receive it? Amen. We do. We receive that blessing, and we must be ready to receive the blessing. If I'm not the one preaching, very often I sit in the balcony. I love to be up there and watch and, and, and see all that's going on. And then usually I'll come downstairs, and I wait for the benediction. And when the benediction comes, then I stand there also. Because, yes, I want to receive that blessing. I'm giving the blessing and receiving the blessing all at the same time. <clears throat> And so it's not just something we do, just as I said to the children today, it's not just something we do, it's our habit that we pray for the children. We love our children, and we want God to be working in their lives and their hearts. We want the Word of God to be alive to them, and so that's why we do it. It's not just a ritual, but it's something very important. So similarly, the benediction, it's not a time to get your things ready, not a time to pick up your Bible and get ready to run, it's a time to stop. <clears throat> and be reminded of God's word, of God's blessing to you. Amen. The blessing, the benediction, God's favor on God's people. God serving you. God loving you. God blessing you in every way. At the ascension, Jesus, just before he was taken up, it says that he lifted his hands and he blessed them. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you have loved to have been there? Well, you know, every time... Someone comes and stands, whether here or in another place, and they lift their hand. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Ah. Remember, Jesus is our high priest, and he is the one, and, and he's conferring his blessings to each one of us. Receive that blessing. Be ready for it. Remember the prayer from John chapter 17, where Jesus prayed for each of us. He prayed to the Father, those ones that you have given me into my hand. I pray for them now. And even today, he prays for us. And we in the benediction get a reminder of the blessing that Jesus prays for each one of us. The Lord bless you and keep you. We begin there in verse 24. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. It's personal. It's intimate. It's for each of us. Each of us can receive it. We receive it as a family, as a congregation, but we receive it also individually. It's a personal thing from God. The Lord bless you. Amen? Say it. The Lord bless me. The Lord bless me. Amen. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And when that benediction comes, say, yes, Lord bless me. 
We've been singing that song. Oh, you've been so good to me. I love that song. It's a different one, but I love it. Oh, yeah, you've been so kind to me. You've been so good to me. Amen. And this week, he's going to be good to me again. He's going to be good to you. And that's why we want, when we hear those words, the Lord bless you. Yes, the Lord bless me. Receive it. He knows your need. He knows your care. He knows your worry. He knows all that's going on in your life, and he wants to bless you. Amen. And sure enough, yesterday, we're part of a crowd. Yesterday, we're in the bigger picture because there's many of us here. One of the crowd, but not just one of the crowd, you're an individual. The Lord bless you. Amen. Ephesians 1 and verse 3, it says, The Father blesses us with all spiritual blessings. He doesn't withhold. He doesn't keep a few on the side. He blesses us with all spiritual blessings. Amen. He shares everything with you and me. The Lord bless you. He blessed you in adopting you into his family. And what a rich family we have here in IEC. From the nations of the earth, from the islands of the sea, God has called us and brought us together as a family of IEC, but even more importantly, as the family of God. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. He's called you in and blessed you with all spiritual blessings. He's adopted you. He has justified you. He has put his grace upon you. He has brought his forgiveness to your life for every sin he has forgiven as we have confessed our sins and he's blessed us with eternal life. The Lord bless you. Amen. And keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. He keeps you from sin, keeps you from the evil of the world, keeps you from fear, keeps you from the devil and the devil's power. But even better than that, he keeps you near. The Lord keep you. He keeps you near. I love our culture here in Ethiopia. We sit near. You know, in America, sometimes if there's, if there's a, you know, a row of chairs like this, of course, if my brother's sitting here, I have to sit at the other end. But in Ethiopia, I'll come and I'll sit with him. We sit side by side. We share with each other. And I love that, that we, we get close to each other. But well, if you can get a picture of this, when he says, the Lord keep you, the Lord keep you close. Do you lean into God? Do you lean into his bosom? Do you lean into his love? That's what he wants. When I say or someone else says, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you, it means the Lord keep you close. Wow. I pray that God would just surround you with his love, that you'd feel the warmth of his care and his presence, and you'd almost feel that hug as he pulls you close. That's what we want. He keeps us from all that bad stuff. He keeps us and safe, but he keeps us. He keeps us by his power. The Lord keep you, keep you by the Holy Spirit. I went into the French congregation this morning just for a few minutes, and they were just singing a song, and my French is almost as bad as my Amharic. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I could hear it. Saint Esprit est là. The Holy Spirit is here. Yes. And I, as soon as I walked in, I could feel and sense the Holy Spirit. And when we say the Lord bless you and keep you, yes, the Holy Spirit keep you and bless you with that presence of God. Know the care and the presence of God. He protects us. He protects us from going where we shouldn't go, and he protects us and keeps us from the enemy. In Afar, you'll see the stones. There are a lot of stones in Afar. Does anybody know it? Wow, from all that lava. I can't imagine when those volcanoes were erupting, how long it took. But they take those stones now, they take those volcanic rocks, and they, they form a circle. And then on top of that, they'll put the thorns, and then they bring their cattle, they bring their goats, they bring their sheep. The camels, they never seem to put in there. The camels just seem to be wandering all over. But they bring them in there. And here in this, in this scripture, we have that picture of the, the shepherd keeping us. He builds a safe place for us, and he brings us in. And he keeps us safe from the enemy. But he also keeps us from wandering where we shouldn't go. He keeps us from wandering out into the desert. Keeps us from wandering into a dangerous place. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. 
Isaiah 26, verse 3, it says that he will keep him. God will keep him where? In perfect peace, whose mind is stayed, is steadfast on you who trusts in you. Wow. Do you know that place of perfect peace? There are days I know it and other days I don't know it. And the days I don't know it, then I go looking for it and I ask God, Oh God, keep me. Bless me and keep me. I want that perfect peace. Let me change my mind off of the circumstances, off of the problems, off of the issues, and keep my mind stayed on you. How many of you have perfect peace all the time? Looking for hands. Somebody's waving them just for a fan. But the scripture promises the Lord will bless you and he will keep you and he'll keep you in his perfect peace when your mind is stayed steadfast upon him. Amen. Psalm 121. Some beautiful verses there. Verse 5. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord care for you. Into the next verse 25. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. To shine on you, the light of his face, the light of his glory. To shine on you. That is a good, good place to be. Amen. I was recently climbing a mountain at night and I didn't have a torch. I didn't have a flashlight. But others in the group had flashlights. And when that light would flash around, I would try to figure out how far was it to that next safe step that I could take. And there were cracks and there were breaks and there were dips and holes and everything else. And I kept looking for that light. I wished I had that other light, that glory shining around me. But if we can get a picture of the Lord, make his face to shine on you. That you would look into the light of his love. That you look into the light of his, of his grace. In the light we see clearly. And if we keep our attention, our focus on the Lord, he will shine his light into every circumstance, every dark place in our lives. Psalm 80, the psalmist there three times the, the same verse is repeated, repeated. Restore us, O God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Amen. Let your light shine upon us. Let your glory shine upon us that we may be saved. Remember a few weeks ago we looked at the, the transfiguration where they went up into the mountain there and Jesus was changed and his, his, his being, his countenance changed like lightning. He was so bright. And the voice of God, the Father, came and said, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Obey him. Though they couldn't stay on the mountain, they were reminded to stay close to Jesus, to stay in his presence, where his face shines, where his presence is. We have light. We have that direction. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Get close to God. Remember the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son had to come home. He couldn't see the light. He couldn't see the care. He couldn't see the love. He couldn't experience the grace until he came home. And then when he got home, he shared in all of the blessings, all of the care of the father. And so what we need to do is we need to keep coming home. We need to stay home. We need to keep close to home. Keep close to Jesus. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The second part of that verse, and be gracious to you. That we would have the grace of God, the wealth of God in our lives, the favor of God. That's what it means. It's not just good words and fun words and, and blessing words. It's packed. The Lord be gracious to you. How many of you go through your day and you meet gracious people all day long and no one but gracious? Yeah, I can hear some laughing. There's some people that are not gracious. But here's the prayer that the Lord be gracious to you. That God would extend his love, his grace, his care to you. The Lord be gracious. The wealth of God, the grace of God, the favor of God. He's shown himself gracious in giving his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and just in a couple of weeks will celebrate his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. The life given on the cross, but that cross that gives us life, the Lord be gracious to you. How amazing. It's not just a good song and a memorable song, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, but we need to remember every time what amazing grace. Lord, be gracious to me. I receive your grace. Amen. The Lord be gracious to you. And then in the next verse, verse 26, the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord, turn his face toward you. The King James, it says, lift up his countenance upon you. Let you be conscious and live in the enjoyment of his personal presence. Can you imagine how you would feel over this side if I just preached to this side of the church? You guys would feel special, and you are. But how do you guys feel over here? If you never see my face and I talk to someone else and I just stay concentrated on this. But how beautiful when we share together. When I talk to people, I like to look at people. I like to look into their eyes and I, and I speak with them. That's what we're talking about here. May the Lord look at you. And may the Lord look at you with pleasure. Have you ever seen moms and dads when the kids are misbehaving? Oh, boy, they're trying to send some glares and they're trying to control their kids by their looks and all the rest of it. But then do you see moms and dads when they're watching their kids and they're in the middle of a football game, soccer game, and you watch them. The ball is at this end of the field and their kid is at this end of the field. Where are they looking? Are they following the ball? No, they're looking on their beautiful one. Amen? Yeah, and that's how it is with God. He's looking at you as an individual. May the Lord lift up his face toward, turn his face toward you. May you walk in his light, walk in his presence, walk in that glory, knowing he's not there behind you, just waiting. Try it, try it, smack. That's not what he's doing. He's looking on you with love. So in the middle of your activity, your ministry, your serving, wherever it is that you are, remember, he's looking on you with love. Receive that blessing. Don't hide from him. Receive that blessing. May the Lord turn his face toward you. Show you his face, his favor. May he look joyfully on you. May he visit you in love. May he bring you the joy of salvation. May, you uphold, may he uphold you by his spirit. He looks at you with approval, with grace, with compassion, with joy. Amen. That's how he looks upon you. May the Lord turn his face toward you. And as you serve whatever capacity you serve in, whether you serve in a diplomatic corps, in the AU, in an NGO, whether you clean, whether you serve in a restaurant, whatever you do, feel God's pleasure as you serve in this world, as you do what God has called you to do. Vocationally, in ministry, in every area, recognize God's pleasure as you serve. May he turn his face toward you, and may he give you peace. Peace. I asked the question earlier, how many of us has peace 24 hours, seven days a week? Probably not. But he wants to bless us with his peace. Peace with God. The peace of God. Peace with ourselves. And peace with others. May the Lord bless you with his peace. Give you peace. Peace in every area. I sat with an executive of a company that I used to work for some years ago. And I was leaving that company and I was moving on to a ministry. And he asked me the question, David, where does your peace come from? How do you live at peace? And I had the most beautiful conversation with him. And those were the things I told him. I'm at peace with God. 
I'm at peace with everyone around me, and I'm at peace with myself. That's the place to be, and explain to him the peace of God. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The shalom of God. And that verse I've mentioned already, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him, on you. And your, when your mind is stayed on God, you will have that shalom of God. Amen? Don't be like Peter. Don't look around at the waves. You look at the waves, you're sinking. I was in a pool recently in a fire there in the Danakil Depression, and it's so full of salt, you can't sink. And I'm a big guy, and I should sink like a rock. I should go right to the bottom of the pool, but I sat down there, and I could not sink. I could hardly even keep my legs down because of all the salt in that, in that place. Don't be like Peter and look around at waves, but recognize you are in that place. The Lord is looking on you with favor, and he gives you his peace. Amen? Receive it. Receive it. The peace of God. The final verse there, 27. So, they will put my name on Israel, on the Israelites. The high priest, the priest will put my name on the Israelites. And what's the last part of that? And I will bless them. Hallelujah. <clears throat> His name is upon you, and he will bless you. That's what it's all about. So when it comes to the benediction, and this morning, after communion, we'll have that benediction, and I want you to receive it. In the first service, as I, as I gave the benediction, every phrase I could hear, amen, amen, amen. And that's telling me, people are there, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. This is God's word to you, his blessing, because you belong to him. Child, you are mine, is what he's saying to you. Receive, receive from him. Make sure you wear the name of God, wear the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on your life. And he promises he will bless you. We look at Israel. God parted the Red Sea so that they could pass through. He sent them bread from heaven and Jerah from heaven. He brought water from a rock. He gave them a pillar of cloud in the day to lead them, a pillar of fire to lead them at night. God says, you are mine, and I will bless you with my presence. I will keep you. I will walk with you. Child, you are mine. Hallelujah. So when you hear the blessing, whichever form it comes in the benediction, remember, yeah, that's a blessing for me. And each time say amen, say I receive it, and take those blessings that God has for you. Each one of you, from the youngest here to the oldest, God knows you, God loves you, and God wants to bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the great blessings that you poured out in our lives and you continue to pour out. And Father, we thank you for this word that reminds us, O oh God, that even you called the high priest and the priests to bless your people. Help us, O oh God, to be a blessing to one another. And Lord, help us, O oh God, to hear the blessing and receive the blessing. Not to walk in fear, but Lord, to walk in peace, in perfect peace, the shalom of God that you give to us because we wear your name and you promised you will bless us. Lord, help us to just internalize, to take these things personally and recognize that you do want to bless us. Lord, help us, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit to see the areas that we need to correct, that we need to change. And help us, O oh God, to be more like you day by day. Transform us by your word, transform us by your Holy Spirit, that we would be that faithful people that bring honor and glory to your holy name. Lord, again, we pray for each one that's come with a need today, and you know what it is, and some physical, some spiritual, some material. But Lord, I pray that each one here would just receive a blessing today, would receive that answer in whatever way you decide to give it. But Lord, that each one of us also, as we go from this place, that each one of us will go knowing 
that we've been in your presence and we've received a blessing from you and we walk in your blessing day by day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And would you receive this blessing from God? The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen. God bless you.